I believe they are probably going to start off, off with some cutscene time, so hello and welcome, enjoy the cutscene. They are not gonna start us off with some cutscene time, so I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Just have to go on to Bugbeak. They're starting us off with some cutscene time. Not really how it went in the story, I don't think. But... Alright, the Dark Tower, interesting. Part 22, 23, not sure, I've quite kinda lost count. And we are ending off year 3 in this video. Maybe starting year 4, probably just ending off year 3 though, because this, this is a mission and missions tend to take like quite a while, tend to take an entire episode. Talking about episodes, today is Saturday. And Saturday means the revival of the GTA series Krogren and me were doing. Really had a lot of fun recording and editing that game again. The last episode we recorded from that was like around the time when I started LEGO Harry Potter. So it's been a while, that's for sure. And I think my editing has, has evolved a bit since then and my content creation in general a bit. It just, it's something that keeps evolving. It's never static. It's never completely finished your style of making videos. Another beautiful thing about this whole YouTube thing, in my opinion. Then again, it's also something that in the future might cause me some trouble if I want to keep the same the same audience watching my videos. Because if some people, for example, come for my really commentary-filled long playthroughs, they, they might enjoy that a lot if I keep doing that. But if I then in the future decide to do something else, like for example play a really fast-paced game that is really gameplay-focused again and stuff like that, they might not enjoy that anymore, so I will lose that audience. But then again, I might gain a new audience that is interested in that other type of content. And it's the same thing with your style of, of videos that you create. If people like the kind of almost non-edited videos that I had at the start, they might not like the style that I'm trying to go for now with a lot more editing and a lot more cuts and stuff. Always gonna be a trade-off between two things. The most important part though, as I've said probably, probably around 4 billion times already, maybe a bit more, is that you keep doing it for yourself and the way you like it yourself. And I gotta say, the way I like it myself is playing some nice and calm Lego Harry Potter with my buddies who are watching this video right now. Ravenclaw crest piece? But yeah, me and Krogren, GTA 5, was a lot of fun, really hectic, a lot of great skits in the end as well, something about a hot dog and a hamburger, I guess you'll have to see it to find it out, but... but we sell hot dogs, they're not hamburgers. <laughs> Fun experience again. It's a it's a great game, GTA 5, isn't it? One of a kind, really. Well, until they release GTA 6, but... I also really went overboard on the editing, like I, I really outed myself, I did completely over the top edits on some parts of that video and I enjoyed it. Now, because it isn't out yet, I have yet to receive some feedback on that editing, so maybe some people will be like, well, yeah, that's that's a bit too much, my man, and I would respect that as well, and I might tune it down a little bit, but for a series as action-packed as that GTA 5 series, I think it was quite adequate and pretty fun. And I learned a lot from those new editing parts as well, because, like, layering other videos in the background was something that I hadn't really done before. And it also made me realize that there is a, a pretty big database of free video footage that you can use which is fun free things are always fun well there's probably some examples that are free that aren't fun but you you know what i mean another thing that's probably going to be really fun is my buddy krogren's own new videos he's gonna try and record a bit again he has already uploaded some series but not complete uh i'm sorry i didn't know hermione's feet were as strong as hercules's he has already uploaded some videos in the past, but he stopped doing it because he felt that recording felt a bit like a chore and he didn't really like doing that anymore. And now I guess that's something that I can I can kind of understand, but then again in the meantime I kind of cannot understand it either. Sure the recording part and the actual playing of the games is probably a lot fun a lot more fun, but the editing part has its own charm as well, in my opinion. Because the editing part is really like the part where you you give your own twist to the video and you you make it your own video actually. Well I guess you do that in the preceding steps of recording, playing, giving commentary as well. And even in choosing the type of game you want to play for your channel, that's your own twist to your own content as well. So I guess editing is not really the only way that you can, the only pathway in which you can influence your content, but it is one of the, the most important ways I think. Because in editing you really really can like make your own kind of thing. You can make your own video, you can make your own audio, you can 
layer, layer the, audio the audio and video, and video, and video, and video, and video you want, you want. can include some funny pictures if you want to do that you can include some some notes some memes the world is your oyster really really funny expression actually like i've heard it a bunch of times because northern lion uses it a lot but i don't know how who actually came up with the expression the world is your oyster what is it what does it even mean what does it imply why is an oyster associated with like being to able being able to do whatever you want i've never had oysters before in my life i i don't think i would necessarily like it generally speaking i'm not that big on fish usually like it's not really my type of food but there are some things that i definitely do enjoy like for example uh shrimps and stuff and mussels clams and recently i've started to learn how to eat like the grilled types of fish as well talking about editing beforehand and talking about Northern Lion now for the 15,000th time in my content um he's still a big inspiration for me of course and I wish I could get some notes from him on how to edit and stuff as well but he doesn't do that most of the time so that's why I have to try to find out my own way in that kind of thing something I'm pretty proud of actually is that I l learned editing all by myself like just completely by myself i didn't watch any tutorials on how to do it or anything i just booted up davinci resolve well it wasn't even davinci resolve in the start of it i just booted up like this this free really buggy video program i don't even remember what its name was but it didn't work well that's for sure and i just learned what the cut button was and off i went and man has it paid off i don't want to sound cocky as i always say like but it's just it's something that i'm really proud of that i just learned that all by myself and i think i've gotten pretty decent at it most of the time actually at editing now because i base most of my other type of content that i want to produce like all of the other variables like commentary and gameplay and the games that i choose i base most of that around northern line type content because that's really what i enjoy the most and what i therefore want to do but for editing i just look at a lot of other youtubers that i watch as well and i try to infer where are good places to cut and stuff from their content and not from northern alliance content this is some kind of the mentor boss fight interesting we emptied out both barrels did that help us any further Do we maybe have to stand behind the barrel when he is doing one of his attacks Oh, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. The contents of those barrels get sucked in when he does his special sucking move, which uh, my girlfriend knows pretty well how to do as well, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I don't know why I said that. I, I, I'm so sorry, I don't know why I said that. And when he sucks up those gubs as well, uh, he kind of messes up his own face a bit, and that's when we are able to hit him. Don't worry guys, I'll find out how to do these things in the end. We lifted up one of those barrels. He's gonna suck. He sucks a lot of those things onto his own face. We hit him. And we complete the goddamn mission and third movie all in one. We're like one coin short of getting the true wizard again, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. See you later. Epic soundtrack in the background, as always. This man feels like he just took some nice acid. There we go, year 3 completed, I think. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, one more year in this game, then we're gonna take a break from LEGO Harry Potter, but until then... I still hope to see you in the next one as always. It was a nice and short episode. I'll see you later. Stay safe. Bye bye. I always forget that when the year ends, there's another cutscene. So, uh, welcome back. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Remus is leaving. <laughs> That was pretty weird. Firebolt. Fastest broom in the world, baby. 
<laughs> Maybe a bit over the top, but sure. I don't need no credits. We still have year four ahead of us. Stop this thing right now. See you guys in the next episode.